distal biceps tendon rupture. The biceps tendon of the long head arises from the superior labrum at the top of the glenoid. It passes underneath the transverse humeral ligament in a groove between the lesser and the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The biceps tendon inserts into the proximal radius at the radial tuberosity at the elbow. Here you can see the insertion of the biceps tendon at the radial tuberosity. And the biceps tendon is inserted into the ulnar part of the tuberosity. The long head takes advantage and inserts proximally. The short head is inserted distally, as you can see here in this diagram. The short head of the biceps arises from the crocoid process. Distal biceps tendon rupture. The tendon ruptures at the radial tuberosity. Patient will feel a pop at the elbow when the tendon ruptures. Distal biceps tendon tear most commonly occurs in the dominant arm of males in their forties, and the injury frequently occurs during eccentric contraction of the biceps muscle. This rupture of the distal biceps tendon must be repaired, otherwise there will be loss of flexion and supination. The patient will feel a pop with pain, swelling, and weakness of the elbow. The biceps muscle may retract into the upper arm, causing a bump or a bapai sign. Examination, you will see weakness, inflection, and supination. The biceps will migrate proximally and use the hook test. How do you do the hook test? The patient actively supinates and flexes the elbow to 90 degree, and the examiner will palpate the tendon from the lateral side. If the distal biceps tendon can be hugged from the lateral side of the elbow, then the biceps tendon is intact. A complete biceps tendon tear is detected by performing the hug test. If there is no tendon that can be hugged with the finger, then this is an abnormal hug test indicating the tendon ruptured distally. Here you can see the tendon is intact. And here the tendon is missing because it's ruptured and migrated proximally. How about the squeeze test? It is another test not as popular, but it may be used to diagnose the distal biceps tendon rupture. The elbow will be flexed 60 to 80 degrees and the forearm will be resting comfortably. Start with the forearm in a slight pronation. Spination of the forearm will occur when squeezing the biceps if the biceps is intact. If the biceps is ruptured, there will be no forearm spination. If not repaired, rupture of the distal biceps tendon may lead to weakness of elbow flexion, and forearm supination. If you don't repair it, the patient will lose 40% of supination and 30% of flexion of the elbow. The brachialis is also an elbow flexor, but the biceps is the dominant supinator of the forearm. It must be repaired, and the repair should be done early within a few weeks, or the tendon will be retracted, scarred, and difficult to pull down. If longer than four weeks, the operation will be harder and a tendon graft may be needed. A single anterior incision, which can be transverse 
or extensile. Here there is transverse incision distal to the anticubital fossa for distal biceps tendon repair. When you make the incision, identify and protect the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve. This little nerve is a hot topic in orthopedics. Supinate the forearm to protect the radial nerve. Then find the biceps, extract it, suture it so you can pull it down and get it ready for repair. And always protect the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve. Extensile approach is used for more chronic cases or when the tendon is very retracted proximally. Or you may want to use double incision, an anterior incision and posterior incision. So which one is better? Both anterior and double incisions have similar success rates. Both have similar percentage of complications, but the type of complication is different. The single anterior incision may injure the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve due to retraction that's required during exposure, especially if the patient is muscular. The double incision, the anterior and the posterior one, has a higher incidence of myositis ossificans and synostosis. So basically, you're going to go into the interval between the brachioradialis and pronator teres. You're going to avoid the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve, and you're going to ligate the radial recurrent artery. The radial tuberosity can be identified by following the natural anatomic bath of the biceps tendon. This natural anatomic bath should be cleaned and the entire biceps tendon footprint should be seen before attachment of the tendon. You're going to find the radial tuberosity, anchor the tendon to the radial tuberosity, and you're going to give a splint for about four weeks. For anchoring the tendon to the tuberosity, you will use suture anchors or cortical button or cortical button and interference screw. A combination of a cortical button and interference screw is stronger than a single technique. You can also use an intraosseous screw fixation. After surgery, thumb up. That means the radial nerve is working. And if you have a lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve injury, the patient will complain of persistent radiating parathesia along the, the lateral side of the forearm. At that point, you rule out lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve injury. This nerve injury is usually temporary. It's in neuropraxia and it resolved with observation and anti-inflammatory medication. It may take up to six months for improvement. Surgery for exploration or release is done in chronic cases. Complication. The concern for the repair is the risk of operative complications due to the proximity to the neurovascular structures. The lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve injury is the most common complication, and it is temporary. The posterior interosseous nerve injury and tendon re-rupture is the most common major complications. The complication rate following single incision is higher than that of the dual incision technique because of the high frequency of neuropraxia to the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve. You may have vascular injury or synestosis and myositis ossificans. From what is the operative technique that increases the supination strength in repairing the tendon in an ulnar position on the radial tuberosity footprint with the forearm in supination? Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.